Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you a few things. Um, I think a lot of you are ready to print, and I don't think very many of you have done test strips because if we're going to print out on the big printer, or even if we're going to print on the small printers, the ink on the small press is very expensive, and the paper on the big printer is very expensive. So it's very important to do um, test strips. Before we do though, let me show you this. I hit Command J, and I make this my original picture. So I, I don't know why I do that. Just this is a safe, a safety net, I guess you can call it. If this is a picture that you just love and you're going to be printing this out, I would like you to go up to Image, Image Size. And if this is not at 300 resolution, then something's going on. Um, here's what you can do though. Hit Resample Image, change it to 300, and hit Resample again. And make sure that it's still a big size. Like see, it's still 14 inches by 9 inches. That's good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say OK. If you don't know how to get your rulers, you just hit Command R. That's how you get your rulers. So we can see that it's still 14 inches by 9. Where in contrast to that, we have this picture, which is a nice picture. But I just did a screenshot of this. So go Image, Image Size, and we see that it's 72 resolution, and it's a 10 by 8 inch. Well, look what happens. To print, in our class, you have to have it at 300 resolution and resample. Look what happens. Look at these rulers right here, what happens. Boop. Okay, so now it's only two inches. Two inches, that's a little tiny picture. So for this picture to look good at 300 resolution, it has to be shrunk down to a two inch by whatever, two and a half inch by two inch little rectangle. So. Make sure you're you're checking these things. This is something you need to check for sure. So image, image size. Okay. So another thing that I would do is you guys know that your screens are extra bright. I'm pretty sure we've talked about this before. And so what you have to do is you have to make adjustments to this picture before you print it. And then we have to do test strips so that we can figure out what's going to print out the best. Before you do that, make sure you do all of those adjustments that you're supposed to do in Camera Raw with the curves and the highlights and the, um, the shadows and the clarity and all of that good stuff. Um, some of these things can be done here. This picture hasn't been edited yet, so let me do curves real quick. Something that's kind of cool, you might not know this, you can hit this little guy here and you can click a specific area. Like if I wanted these, these right here to be lighter I can or darker, I can click on them and it only changes that one thing. Or if I wanted them to be lighter, I could pull up on it. It only picks whatever it is that I sampled. Let's say that I wanted to make this these darks over here lighter so see it's just changing the dark values whatever I clicked on it's kinda interesting um, you can also come over here let's see that's before and that's after I kinda like let's see here I kinda like that one the best Remember, it does look a little bit bright on my screen, but our printers print really, really dark, so you, you just have to make these adjustments. Um, let's see here. The next thing I want to show you is you can actually change the I certainly don't want it to be dark because it's already going to print dark. I mean, that's up to you. That's up to you. You can also change the exposure. Um, okay, now let's do what I think everybody needs to do on every single picture, is let's do a high pass filter. So you're clicked on the, pic the actual picture, do a Command J, come up here and change it to overlay. It's going to look funny, but then we're going to do filter, other, high pass. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to, um, let's kind of zoom in a little bit. If we were to really make this um, really, really sharp, it would change it to look like this. High pass just means sharpening. When you do an inverted high pass, that's when it makes it look nice and smooth and, and silky. <laughs> um, I would do anywhere from two. I mean, you have to decide. I'm looking at the picture over here, and I'm looking at it. But since we take pictures in the raw, or most of us do, it's very important to go back and add some clarity to it. Or it's actually a high pass filter, which is kind of the same thing. So I'm going to say OK. So I'm going to turn it off. Turn it on. I'm going to zoom in because I can't really see anything. Okay, it's off. And now it's on. Okay, if we look right here where it says Sterling, off, look down here too, and on. Okay, you might not be able to see that on my screen, so I am going to actually. I'm clicked on this thing again. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make it so that you can really see what I'm doing. Other high pass. I'm going to make it so you can see a big change. I'm going to say OK. OK, that's before. Look right here and right here. That's after. It's not making that big a difference on my screen. Okay, let's come over here to this one. You'll be able to see it better. Let me zoom in. Okay, so here's her face. This is before, and then this is after. Before, see how it's kind of fuzzy looking? And after. Okay, and that's just a high pass filter. Okay, so. How do we create test strips? Well, there's lots of different ways of doing this. Um, let's see here. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command Option Shift E. And what we're going to do is create a layer that has everything combined into one. Um, one layer for you. Let's try that again. Command Option Shift E. So here is all this this picture with all of these edits. So the reason it looks funny is because it's not on top. Okay, so I should be able to click on this eyeball, and everything under it should it it should be exactly the same because all of this stuff here when I did command option shift E it put all of this into one layer for me so let's see if it worked okay so there shouldn't be any change at all okay and there's not so I can go ahead and turn off these it put everything into one layer for me which is what you want so now we're going to do some test strips there's so many different ways you can do this um, and you have to decide what you want to put on each test strip. I mean, do you want to change the brightness? Do you want to do um, curves? Do you want to do an extra high pass filter on it? I mean, you just get to decide. I guess what I would do first is I would get my rectangular marquee and I would probably Command J Let's make sure it's there. It's there. There's the first test strip. Test strip. I'm going to say curves. I'm just kind of guessing. I'm going to do another one. Command J. And then I'm going to do, let's see here. What can we do on this one? How about hue and saturation? These are all, I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm not sure what's going to look the best on our printers. It's all a guessing game. Well, kind of. 
Did I show you how to calibrate your screen yet? This is what my screen and your screen looks like. Let's come back over here so you can see the difference. Okay, I don't know if you can see a difference. I can't really see that big a difference, but this is what my original screen looks like. But when you go and you calibrate your screen, let me go ahead and X out of this so you can see. Come down here to your system preferences. Go to displays. Hit color. And you can actually go through the steps to calibrate your screen so that whatever you see on your screen is what's going to, to print out. Now it's not a perfect science because I have yet to find the perfect way to do this without having to do test strips. But at least it gets a little bit closer. So I'll show you how to calibrate in just a second. But this is what my original screen looks like. And then this is when I just calibrated it right before I started this tutorial. Okay, so that's what my normal screen looks like. And see how pretty it looks? It looks nice. But the thing is, when we print these things out, they don't look as nice as what they look like on our screen. It's not the printer's fault, it's the screen's fault. So let me show you how you do this. Come over here to Calibrate. Make sure Expert Mode is chosen. You have to kind of hold your head back a little bit and you have to kind of squint your eyes and try to get this apple to disappear. See how you can see the apple a lot? Now the apple's too light. And see how the apple's disappearing? So I'm not going to do this on every single one of them. There's, I forgot how many there are. I think there's four of these. So you're trying to get the apple to disappear by moving this up and down. Just I'm squinting my eyes and I've got my face really far away from the screen. I'm trying to get that apple to disappear. Go to the next one. There's an apple right here. It's kind of hard to see, which is a good thing. Okay, and then hit continue. So you can really see it there. There's a big black apple. We don't want that apple to be there. We want to kind of get it to disappear. Okay, so once you do this, what you're doing is you're calibrating your screen so that you see what you get. And then just leave it here at standard, hit continue, continue. You can say other, you want other people to be able to use your calibration. And continue. Mooney, April 14th. Number two, demo. Sometimes you have to put your password in. Okay, so here we go. Here's all the different ones that I've done. This is the original, like what comes with your Mac. Here's one that I did in February, which is probably the one that's the closest to what prints out because our printers seem to be printing out pretty dark. Here's another calibration I did. Here's one that I did earlier today. And then here's the one that I just did with you guys. So there's lots of ways of doing this. If you don't like doing test prints, which I'm about to show you how to do, or test strips, um, maybe you want to try calibrating your screen. You know, there's lots of different ways of doing this. Uh, I'm going to keep this one. Okay, so let's come back over here. Just for the sake of time, I'm just going to do three. I'm just going to do three test strips. Okay, so there's one, two, three. So this first one is going to be our first test strip, and we're going to do a curves adjustment. So you come down here and hit curves. Where did it go? And then we only want it to affect the strip that's below it, so we're going to hit this little guy here. And watch, it's only going to make that first test strip change. Okay. 
Come on now. Okay, so this layer is affecting this layer. Okay, so now then we want to do a hue and saturation. Why the heck not? And I'm going to hit this little guy here so it affects only that second strip, this one right here. And this is where you just kind of just kind of play around with it. Okay. Um, so the curves one here is, is affecting this one. The hue and saturation is affecting this one. This one, let's just see what we have here. Hey, why not? Let's do vibrance. See, that's desaturating it to make it black and white. And then I'm going to hit this little guy. Okay, so I know this looks kind of crazy right here. Um, but this is how you have to do it. You have to print these out and find out which is the best, which one looks the best. And then you do your final, your final print. I know it's a lot of work, but here's the good thing, is that you'll only have to do this maybe once or twice, and you'll kind of get to know the printer and how it prints in relation to what your screen looks like. So hopefully this has helped you out a little bit. I expect you to be doing this for the mixed media project if you're printing out anything. Um, you have to do test prints on your, if you're printing out on the big printer, or you also have to do, whatever printer you use, you have to do test prints. I guess that's it. I hope this has helped. Thanks.